Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Episode von Insert Moin. Ich bin auch im Jahre 2023 immer noch die Anne und heiße euch herzlich willkommen und begrüße euch zu diesem Podcast im neuen Jahr. Ich hoffe, ihr seid alle gut reingerutscht. Ihr hattet ein schönes Weihnachtsfest, schöne freie Tage, die ihr mit euren Liebsten verbringen konntet. Wir starten jetzt wieder durch und ich beginne dieses wunderschöne Jahr mit einer Tradition. Ab dreimal ist es eine Tradition, sagt man offiziell. Äh, wer mich kennt von euch, der weiß, ich habe drüben in den Staaten in der Videospielindustrie einen sehr, sehr guten Freund, mit dem ich mich regelmäßig austausche. Und seit ein paar Jährchen, wie gesagt, ähm, nehmen wir immer Ende des Jahres oder Anfang des neuen Jahres einen Podcast auf und quatschen so ein bisschen darüber, wie das letzte Jahr war, was das neue Jahr bringen wird ähm, und ja, generell so Gossip, Skandale, einfach über das, was in der Videospielindustrie so passiert. Und das tue ich auch dieses Mal wieder und bei mir ist tatsächlich wieder Kyle Bosman. Wer von euch das jetzt zum allerersten Mal mitbekommt, Kyle Bosman arbeitete sehr lange für die riesige Plattform Game Trailers und ähm, hat bei Jeff Keighley tatsächlich gelernt, als Game Trailers noch im amerikanischen Fernsehen sogar dann lief, ähm, hatte eine sehr erfolgreiche Show namens The Final Bossman auf YouTube und hat sich seitdem weiter und weiter entwickelt, hat mit seinen Arbeitskollegen Easy Allies gegründet, quasi eine ein neues Outlet, das aus Game Trailers entwachsen ist, als die dicht gemacht wurden. Und jetzt mittlerweile ist er selbstständig und äh, streamt auf Twitch und hat natürlich auch eine ja, Show im Sinne von The Final Bossman, würde ich behaupten, die da heißt Delayed Input. So. Und wir sprechen jetzt, wie gesagt, über ein paar Schöne Dinge aus dem letzten Jahr, ein paar vielleicht nicht so schöne Dinge aus dem letzten Jahr, die Game Awards und was wir von 2023 denn so erwarten. Und ein kleines Spielchen ist auch noch dabei. Volles Paket heute, freut euch drauf, ich hoffe ihr habt Spaß damit und los geht's. Hello Kyle, I'm super happy you're back this year again. Hello. Hello. Nice. I love this tradition. Can we call it a tradition yet? When you've done it more than three times, it's a tradition, right? On the third time, it's a tradition, yeah. Okay, cool. So now this cast that we do every year, either at the end or the beginning of the next year, is a tradition. Okay. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. There's much to talk about. Um, What is the German word for tradition? Tradition. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, same thing. Should we... I, I got a lot of stuff today because, like, I thought about what you do, right? You, I mean, you do online, kind of online shows about gaming. You used to do uh, The Final Bossman, which was a big project back in the days for you. And now you're doing a Delayed Input on, on YouTube. And... You're always kind of structured and you, there's always fun in it and there's always also meaning in it. And I was like, maybe I should do some fun stuff too. So there's going to be different things today. And I would start, of course, with last year. And we, I remember we talked about Gamescom because you were here helping out with O&L and I was there too. And we... I. I think we recorded a podcast after that, didn't we? Did we do that this year? I wonder myself. <laughs> but I my... think we skipped it this year. I think we did it last year, but I think we skipped it this year. Really? I, in my brain, we did it this year, but we used to do it. We did it before. Let's say this. We did it before. We, we talk about like the stuff we work on and uh, what your experiences were. So, of course, of course, of course, I want to talk about the Game Awards 2022, which were good. Like sometimes, I mean, I stream it live every time for my audience on Twitch. So 
I can go through it together with <laughs> with the people <laughs> because like sitting here at night until like five in the morning is kind of exhausting if you do it alone. Um, so we, of course, talk a lot and we rate stuff. And I, th I thought, yeah, those shows are getting better and better and better. And I wonder how you felt about it this this year. I felt it was better, too. Um, there was, you know, a huge part of Game Awards always and how people perceive it is how good the trailers are. Right. And that's yes, completely out of the production's hands. Generally, you know, you, you can lock down any video game, but you don't know what their how good their trailer is going to be. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, sometimes you get lucky and then sometimes uh, you're not lucky. <laughs> and uh, I feel like it was a kind of a lucky year for good, really good trailers. But also uh, there was a real conscious effort to make the show shorter this year to make it more zippy. Yes. And I think that was successful. That was a great idea, by the way, because. I mean, we all know the Oscars and like Keeley compares the Game Awards himself to the Oscars a lot and stuff. And they're so long. I mean, they have like the same thing, like music acts in between that are nominated. They have all those categories for movies and special effects, actors, whatnot. Um, but, you know, it's it's okay because it's high class and there's so many celebrities. People want to just see what they look like in fancy clothes. And so that's kind of the point where I say, okay, it's okay that this glamorous uh, award show takes forever. But for like the Game Awards, it's like, I mean, gaming industry is not glamorous. It's just there's cool people. There's there's creative people. There's there's just you know. No, and I don't get this. Hold on, you you say that if people wore more glamorous clothes to the Game Awards, it could be longer. No, it's no. I'm saying I'm sa I'm I'm actually saying what Jeff Keighley did. Jeff Keighley put Al Pacino on the stage. There is a factor about huge celebrities because, yeah, Troy Baker is cool. And he does every voiceover in every video game, but he's not Al Pacino, right? Exactly. What's a funny thing is uh, Al Pacino's the only person who got a standing ovation, I think. Right. See, that's <laughs> what I mean. A room full of those people is always what fascinates me the most. Remember, yeah. remember, like the the um, award show with Ellen, where she took the selfie with all these like actors and actresses, that was huge. That was like people lost their minds about that. People didn't lose their minds about that. They did. It was huge on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but today it's irrelevant, right? Today nobody cares about that selfie. Oh, yeah. We still, well, in a, like, in a quiz, people would ask who was on that selfie famously, you know? Do you know the answer? I think I do, which is embarrassing. Go on. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. There was Angelina Jolie, there was Bradley Cooper, there was uh Jennifer Lawrence, Jared Leto, uh, Jared Leto. Um there was oh boy. Ellen, of course. Um Ooh. That's like six people I I remember. Who's in uh the movie where there's the the aliens talk in ink circles? Oh, um, yeah, Jeremy Renner and Amy Adams. Were they in the photo too? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think so. Do you have it open? I got it now. I got it now. Okay, so you oh, you I... did really good. Really? Yeah. Jared Leto's on the far left. He looks like he doesn't belong. Oh, uh -huh. all right. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, I can see why. <laughs> uh, you missed Meryl Streep. Oh, my God. How could I? Uh, there's a lot of people I don't recognize, honestly. It looks like Bradley Cooper is the one taking the photo. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But one omission that now kind of taints the whole image is Kevin Spacey, right? In the oh, middle. my goodness. He's wow. just hanging out. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, see? What, what, what an epic picture. Like, even now, if you look at it, you're like, holy crap. If, we, if you only had known... <laughs> yeah 
So what I was saying, I know, sorry, I mean, yeah, yeah. To, back to our point. I like, I do think you know this is the thing to like avoid. I don't, I don't think this selfie is cool. Mm, today, no, I don't think so too. But back in the day, it was crazy. And like, th the thing is, you want to do stuff that makes people want to watch these award shows, and. I, I don't mean it in a like in a bad way. I don't want to be rude, but if those game awards were only the awards, nobody would watch it. Oh, so yeah. people Keely knows that too. Yeah, sure. So people come for the trailers, but you can't just put all the trailers in there and then just skip all the awards. So if you like it has to be kind of a long show because you have to fit the awards in, right? Yeah, and I mean musical uh, performances as well. It's, sure. You know, it's designed to be a show. It's designed to, yeah. you know, have changes in pace and excitement. And uh, in, in ways like even commercial breaks serve a purpose, you know. Yeah. Uh, people wouldn't watch just trailer, 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 trailer. You know, they, mm -hmm. like it's I, I don't. I can't begin to think about how like the actual design works of like, okay, we have these many awards, these many trailers, where do we slot where? Uh, but um, yeah, it's what weird. It? It's all part of like an equation of like, what makes a show? What makes this entertaining? How do we mm -hmm. increase our audience? Why, how do we keep them entertained while maintaining the integrity of the awards themselves? Yeah. What a nightmare, to be honest. I wouldn't <laughs> want to do it. It's like, you can only do wrong. If you ask the internet, you can only do wrong. And so what I was going to say is it's so hard to make this award show shorter and they did it anyway. And it was good. Yeah. That's that's my whole point. So I thought it was good, but also I kind of thought there have been better game awards before. And that is because there were so many trailers I like vaguely remember, but also the more CG you get in there, like the the more non in game content, the more obsolete the trailer gets. So like Diablo Four, I was mad. I was like, go home. <laughs> Why are you showing me this? Everybody knows the Diablo lore. Not everybody. I don't. I didn't know it was happening <laughs> oh, okay. in that trailer. All right, not everybody. To be fair, but uh, it's just I don't understand. And that is, of course, what you mentioned. You can't change it. You don't know what they're gonna send you. Sometimes it's just very, very hard. Even coming out of a pandemic and like people are working and working and don't maybe don't want to show stuff early or what not like let's say three three-fourths of all the trailers were nice but there's not one there's not one where i was like mind blown how was it for you so what's weird is i barely get to watch the trailers during the show they, oh. they don't oh, yeah. play them in the theater during rehearsals they just play a black screen while sure, in sure, uh sure in the control room they're absolutely watching the trailers uh so yeah for for me it's like uh a bunch of code names on a, on a run sheet until it's like actual day of the show and then i can kind of like oh that's what that was that's what that was um but a, a funny thing is another thing that's completely out of our control right is the drama of the awards themselves and i think that was diminished a bit this year when god of war ragnarok and elden ring were such front runners yeah sure. there, there wasn't a, there wasn't as much uh butterflies in your stomach when it's time to announce game of the year or best performance or best direction uh because it, it's pretty plain like which one of two ways this is gonna go um and so it, it's interesting it was uh like last year i thought like there weren't any super strong contenders for game of yeah. the year no, yes. no like games that will create a legacy and this year there were two of those and then mm -hmm. other games. And, uh, you know, it, it's weird. I feel like if we're talking about like the Oscars, right? Mm -hmm. If they had such a situation where there are two obvious front runners, I think they would try to make that a narrative throughout the show. You know, I, I think they would try to like 
goose that a little bit and like make it the story of the Oscars. And obviously we didn't, you know, we weren't really trying to like pit the games against each other or anything like that. Um, I think but, it uh, has a, I think it has a different reason to be honest. The hmm. Oscars and I'm not the only one who feels like that. The Oscars are heavily political. All of the all of the films and and and, and actors and whatnot, all of the people involved in into the nominees and Oscars and stuff are excellent. They're so good. They're really really top notch. So they, I feel like, and I think most people feel like the Academy splits it up even to make, you know, to honor enough women, to honor enough whatnot all kind of stuff that we talk about these days and that's no, what, what the do gamers don't do votes what do you mean they split it up even? they split it up i think maybe the voters take that into consideration when they're making their votes mm. yeah they do or are you are you are you suggesting the academy awards are corrupt no, it's not corruption. It's not what I'm saying. It would it's, be, yes. If it's like, hey, we got to give this award to this person. We got to give this award to this person. Let me get an example. Okay. We have, like when we watch the Oscars at mm. Rocket Beans, we have uh, like a, uh, what would you call it? Like a quiz, like a betting game. Oh, we'd call it a pool. We predict. We predict who's going to win which category. Yeah. And... It's very easy. Let's say this. It's very easy to predict Oscar winners. And I tried at the Game Awards this year with my co-host Manu. And we were doing okay. We were not so good. But the Oscars, we were always doing good because we know we, we, we do exactly what I told you. We say like, oh, this is going to win because... The other one is going to go for best direction. And then this is going to be, this movie hasn't have an Oscar yet. So it's going to win this one. And it works. So you're saying you're better at predicting Oscars than you are game awards? Definitely. That's funny. It's yeah. It, it I just noticed it, you know, I don't want to sound crazy or whatever and, and say, Oh, they're all corrupt, but to me, I, think, I think it comes into factor when you're voting. You're like, oh, man, I should really vote for Leo. He, he deserves one finally. Right. The Leonardo DiCaprio thing is the best example ever because he, he has deserved it so many times. And the movie he got it for is actually not his greatest movie. And so people are saying he has to get it at some point. And so he just gets it then. There's, I mean, I'm pretty sure it works like that, but you know, we, we, we're drifting apart again. It's so funny. It's so good to drift apart with you. It's so easy. <laughs> well, okay. So like game award voting, right? It's like, yeah. it's 10% viewers, right? And the yeah, others it is. are, yeah. Okay. The, yeah. Like a huge, like, I feel like it's over a hundred outlets across the globe. Yeah, uh, yeah. People voting. Right. But so it is like. It's definitely, I guess, you know, there's no campaigns, there's no for your consideration, but also, you know, the review outlets get the free games and all that. Like they get access to these games. And uh, yeah, it is funny. It's it, I don't know if anyone was like voting for Elden Ring because it's like, wow, you know, Miyazaki really deserves one this year. So I get I get the point of like saying in contrast, it seems less political. But I also think that it's still like. um, You have to be well liked by many people to win. A game award yes and that's the difference that's the difference between the game awards and the oscars in my opinions like if you had a hundred percent voting from the audience it would be so easy to predict no it wouldn't it would uh-uh then it would be like genshin impact wins everything well if it's nominated in every category it <laughs> would probably win everything yeah <laughs> Oh man, this discussion is go is going out of hand. Okay. Um. So, what else? I wanted to know. I wanted to know stuff. I wanted to know. Have you actually seen Al Pacino? Have you met him? 
No, I don't do I don't do backstage stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) there was a moment I had to run backstage to help out with something. But generally, I'm at uh, Jeff Keighley's side stage. He's got that little circular stage where he was hanging out. doing his, His bit with Animal. That's yeah. generally where like I'm located, which is a really bad seat uh, to watch trailers from. Yeah. I, I realized I was feeling this really bad for all the people in the audience. It's like, oh, I can't see. None of these people can see actually the screen from here. But uh, I think that's kind of just the way things go in a theater sometimes. Yeah. But um, no, 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 I don't I don't really I don't meet anybody. Oh, that's that's sad, though. I handed Doug Bowser a water. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That was nice of you. <laughs> and you were a murderer, a suspect at least. Yeah. I I I thought it was hilarious. Did you write that joke? We wrote that. We wrote that joke. That was what's cool about that one is that it like it came, it was, you know, notes back from uh a lot of the, a lot of the introductions to video games or guests uh have to be approved right sure. and like the original thing wasn't approved and so it's like what do we do with this and so it was kind of like a collaborative thing and uh it came out of it like like we had a read through right and it's just like we're kind of like all pitching on it and um they uh they said like let's use kyle for this you know like let's bounce when we're bouncing around like who's the murderer right mm-hmm. and i was like haha okay that would be don't but you know like i don't get it i don't think that'd be funny if it's me They should all be celebrities. (laughs) And uh, like when I I didn't like pack clothes for looking like I'm on TV. Right. I didn't think that that was going to be a serious thing. But then, you know, first day of rehearsal, it's like, Kyle, you're like, you're good to do that. Right. And I was like, I didn't know. I didn't know that was serious. (laughs) So so I actually I wasn't sure that like me in a hoodie looked good for the show as like, oh, if this guy's just wearing a hoodie in the audience. So I actually like bought a shirt and tie earlier that morning, just in case one of the producers brought it up, but nobody Mm -hmm. did. So there I am in a t-shirt and hoodie in the, in the, in the crowd. I think people loved it. I loved it. I was screaming. I was screaming at my screen. I was like, Oh my God. (laughs) It wasn't that good. (laughs) No, it was just so funny. It was so funny to see you actually on the screen because I knew you wouldn't do the pre-show because Sydney did it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, hmm, maybe is he is he gonna be in it? What what is he gonna do? And then like and then you just appear in a funny joke. It's fun. Uh Reggie was super down for it, which was really cool. Oh yeah, I imagine. We like we didn't know how to ask him politely. Like, hey, <laughs> We're doing like <laughs> poor poor Gabe. Gabe's the main writer. He had to write the email, right? And it's like, oh yeah. So we're doing this bit where we're having the presenter accuse the audience of being a murderer, and Reggie's like, "I got it. I'm in." <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Happy to help. It's, oh, that was it was so nice. Oh man, that's hilarious. Yeah, we kn- we know he's a cool dude, right? We know it. It's just Reggie. I know now. I wasn't sure before. Really? You wasn't? Yeah, you know, anybody can like put on an air. Anybody can, you know, present themselves in a certain way. Sure, yeah. I was not sure how you would respond to that email. Huh. All right. Do you think Shui would do it? Yes. All right. How about Phil Spencer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think so, too, though. I think he would do it, too. Yeah. Cool. Nice. All right. <laughs> what about Doug Bowser? He would do it. I wonder. Thing is, like, Reggie doesn't have to represent a corporation oh. anymore. Yeah, Nintendo would be like, huh. Yeah. Maybe. Not, Reggie's, you know, he's solo now. He's running his own business. He's, sure, sure. he's free. He's free to do whatever weird thing he wants to do. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Maybe B- Bowser would love to, but he had cu- had to, like, uh, kindly decline and say, no, thank you. <laughs> What's funny is uh, he was wearing um, Bowser socks. Oh, my God. So he's like, he's... 
he's into how silly it is. You know, he's 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 down to clown. Sure, I would. If you no, like honestly, if you're gonna do Nintendo America's lead and you were named Bowser. I'd you be so it. sick of the joke. I would be, I don't know how he does no. it. I'd be sick of that joke. I'd, I'd day, I, w- I would say, okay, let's get the, my first week in the office. All right, get your jokes out. After that, I don't want to hear it from any of you. No, it was different. Kyle. <laughs> no, no, no. I know the story. You know? What's, Duck no, what's Bowser, the story? I think he was just a little kid and he was playing Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And like the first Nintendo came out. And then. So he's he's younger than I am in this scenario. <laughs> like you're now? Yeah. Yeah, you sure. Said he's, a, he's a little kid when the first Nintendo comes out. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's just, I mean, he sees that, that, that the evil guy in the Mario game is called Bowser. And he's like, yeah. oh my God. God, that's so funny. Look, I'm Bowser. And he's like, all his life, he's like, from that day on, he wants to work at Nintendo because his name is Bowser. And finally, he made it to the top. Through marketing. Yes. (laughs) How amazing. Don't you think it's... If you want to be, that's the thing. If you want to be a CEO of a gaming company, don't make games, just go into marketing. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. <laughs> and B. Iwata, then- Iwata made it work, but it's it's like such a rare circumstance where it's like, nah, you should you should be in marketing if you want if you want to take that path. It's so it's so funny. I I can totally imagine that it happened exactly that way I described it. I would do it that way. He was a teenager when Mario came out. Same I- thing. Teenagers <laughs> don't know life. <laughs> They're just they're just naive too, and they're just right. so happy too. Then, don't you think? I think, yeah. I honestly think a hundred percent circumstantial, and I bet it got weirder and weirder the higher in the ranks that he rose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the Japanese, it got weirder and weirder. Yeah, 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 sure. But it was his dream. I bet. I bet it's not even his dream. No, no, no. It was his dream. I bet. Like you know what I mean? Like. Kyle People believe. like that, they're ready to like, they're, they're just a, a, being a president of a, a huge business like that is a stepping stone. Hmm. Look at Reggie. He didn't retire. He kept going. Yeah, sure. I know. But, you know, if, if Reggie's last name would, would have been Bowser, he would have stayed forever. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I think that really would have changed things. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So there's one more thing. Of course, I'm I'm gonna ask you. Maybe you don't want to talk about it. Maybe you can't talk about it. That guy at the end of the award show. Were you confused when you saw him on stage? Because let me tell you my story. I okay. was I was there. Looking at Miyazaki and all the people on stage, and I saw this smaller guy, and I honestly thought he was just one of the team. I was like, From Software has people from different countries too. I mean, they're Japanese, but they they work internationally. So I thought he would actually belong there. I didn't think he was a kid at all. Yeah, you want to be like, you want to be, you don't want to be the person who thinks that somebody doesn't belong there. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, it is funny. It, yeah. It, definitely, I wasn't having flares going off thinking something is wrong right now. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's the thing I think back about a lot is like, what could it like, could I have assessed that better? Um, but uh, no, I don't know. I mean, nothing happened. Security didn't come up. Nobody noticed. Nobody was like, even like, because Japanese people are so friendly. They didn't say anything. Oh, yeah. And I mean, like, they, they put the microphone up for him. Oh, man. Miyazaki finished his speech, and that kid, like, walked up to the microphone and started talking. <laughs> and in the control room, they're like, oh, let me turn on the microphone back yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh. So that was wild. No, I don't, I don't have a lot to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was just a wild thing. It was just, I, I mean, I didn't expect it to end like this and it kind of overshadowed uh, the conversation for a while on Twitter. But ha luckily, it just went away as fast as it was there. It had a few good memes and I enjoy memes. So that was fun. But, you know, it was just a guy talking bullshit and everybody will forget about him apparently or eventually sorry <laughs> no i mean i think you're right i think it, i think it yeah. faded it's it sucked it sucked that night right because that was what what everybody was talking about but um mm -hmm. you can't control that you can't control no. what people will choose to be excited about and talk about but uh yeah I think you're right. I think I think that, you know, coming into next year, it's not going to be like, where's that kid? It's, you know, it'll be whatever the new thing is. Yeah. In my mind, do you know the first thing I thought in my mind when all this happened and I understood what happened? I was like, next year, there's going to be no regular audience. Uh-uh. Nope. No tickets anymore. Oh, I mean, no. <laughs> that... <laughs> That's just my immediate thought was Healy, like no ticket sales. What is he gonna like? He still got to charge for tickets. Yeah, I mean, but like you know, there you this little kid or whatever you, this little teenager maybe I don't know. Uh, he bought a ticket, right? He doesn't know anybody in the industry. He just went in. Yeah, it is funny talking to, talking more about a contrast between Oscars and Game Awards, right? Like, you, yeah, you buy tickets. It's like a it's a cool show to go to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I felt like you can't do it anymore because you never know. You never know who's going to come in and do whatever. So that was my that was my initial thought on it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say 2023 still general admission. All right. It's my prediction. Prediction, by the way, not I've not talked to anybody about that, obviously. But yeah, yeah, I know. I know. We will see. We will see on next year's uh, podcast when we come together again. Okay. <laughs> uh, of course, I have to ask you for your favorite uh, games of the year as we're looking back on 2022. Mm -hmm. um, I need to take a guess if before you reveal your games. Okay. So, so you I know what? I think your guesses are going to help. You asked for three, my favorite three games of 2022, yes. and I wrote down four, undecided oh. Wow. Even, you know, minutes before this podcast started, what actually are my top three? So this might help. Yeah. Okay. So I think God of War is on there. Yeah. And there is Pokemon, not the Arceus, but like uh, Scarlet and Violet. Mm -hmm. Um, What else could there be? What else could there be? Wasn't there one really good video game that came out this year yeah i mean elden ring of course yeah um but you know i, f I feel like to me you don't seem like a souls game person because it's my number one elden ring's my number one holy crap okay nice we're gonna talk about it but what uh -huh. is the fourth game so we got a god of war Elden ring pokemon and mm -hmm. stray yeah you guessed that oh boy so yeah, I don't know if Stray takes the Pokemon slot. I think Pokemon's like obviously it's like too flawed to go in your top three. It but also it, it doesn't so much, deserve it. It's so much weirder though. It's so much sillier than something like God of War Ragnarok, which maybe makes it into my top, th makes it more of a top three candidate. You know, mm. and that's why I like Elden Ring is weird and silly. I think that gets lost out of the conversation a lot. <laughs> um, the game's just a goof sometimes, and. Uh, it's fun to interact with the game. The game pushes and pulls with you. I feel like you spend a lot of that game interacting with it. Yeah, sure. Of course. I mean, it's like um it's a, like a surprise box. It's like the definition of what sandbox used to mean. Because you never know. Like there's also there's so many craziness, so much craziness going on in Elden Ring, but it's still very similar to the original formula of like dark souls and bloodborne and whatnot but the open world has more options to go crazy that's what i thought of playing elden ring it's like it's it's just even more weird now <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah the game says go nuts yeah 
I mean, yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good and thing. And so God of War in contrast uh, is not go nuts. They have a lot. I think the God of War has a lot of systems, no doubt. But like, I mean, even if you like watch the different builds, uh, you know, largely like you're playing. Everybody's playing the same game. Sure. Yeah. It's and it's dead serious. It's not dead serious. There's oh, lots of humor, me, I would say, in this one. Yeah, not in the sense of humor, but like it has a story that was written to be emotional and honest and like move people. Mm -hmm. I mean, this kind of seriousness. Of course, gotcha. there's humor in there and, you know, but if when you play this game, I feel like everybody who played it is like emotion emotionally torn apart at some point. And most video games try to do this. Few succeed. Like Yeah. I, yeah. The, the, uh, like the writing and performances are mm -hmm. so strong in God of War Ragnarok. Uh, yes. I I think that's like I think that's why it's sticking around in my top three. It's uh it's fun. It's like it's just something you admire. It's something it's something I do look up to is God of War Ragnarok. And yeah, I'm I'm well aware of its like short fallings, but um uh I think it's special. I think it's uh I think it's you know setting a bar. Yeah. <laughs> basically, basically like Horizon Forbidden West in February of last year. It's like, man, this game is so good. Look look at where games are. And then it I think it is below the bar of god of war ragnarok in sure. a lot of ways and i think it's why it's like it's why it's harder to remember horizon it's so weird like god of war ragnarok sets this expectation for all games that we've played this year but also like the games we'll play next year you gotta be if you're gonna be similar to god of war ragnarok you have to be better um or else just be something completely different but yeah it's, it's kind of it's really interesting. Like, we'll, like Star Wars next year. You know what I mean? We're mm. going to compare that to God of War Ragnarok. How do the scenes hit? How do the environments feel? How does the combat feel? Like all of those will probably be in contrast to God of War Ragnarok and probably also Elden Ring when it comes down to like enemy interactions, maybe. But um, uh, yeah, it's mm. interesting. This, this is one of those games, you know, that that is going to be the one that other games are compared to. Sure. I'm not quite sure about Star Wars, though, but... We here on this podcast had the same discussion in our like um, review of the year. The same question came up. Why do people love this God of War franchise, like the, the reboot so much? And the same people say, yeah, Horizon, that's a, that's a good game. You know, it was exciting. It was fun. I love Alloy. But it's not the same as God of War. The standard is so high for Horizon. It's incredible but mm -hmm. still people do not feel the same way at all about it why is that i wonder every time same with the first you know it came out with zelda back then same time this year it came out with elden ring same time that can't be the only reason why it's not this successful as like other playstation ips right yeah i think that gosh we're gonna all right i'm gonna get really rude here this is the rudest thing i could say about a game i'm I think, excited i think horizon isn't special enough how so, can it not be special you have like me mechanical dinosaurs and shit yeah so i think i think the most iconic design is the flat-headed brontosaurus sure yep when i saw that when i that was man that leaked that was in concept art that leaked it was like gorillas working on like an rpg that takes place in like a crazy super future where they're like we've reverted to prehistoric methods like whoa and i just i like remember that image and what's crazy about it is that like nothing tops that they didn't they're like most of the new creatures right they just have they're just monsters with eyes and a mouth, <laughs> you know, like nothing is nothing is as wild as that cool brontosaurus with a flat dish head. And mm. um, uh, obviously you would say like, oh, well, they tried. OK, huge 
horizon spoilers now they tried new stuff they they tried like the f- super future space aliens yes robots and they don't make an impact you no. know nobody wants a t-shirt with that thing on it N- nobody wants the lego set of that i would say fewer people want the lego set of of that and so like what's what's so dumb is is that like enemies are so essential in what makes a game memorable you know and like think of zelda think of mario like it's it's the enemies you're facing think of batman i guess but like horizon Hmm. while it has like this clear aesthetic i just love looking at the robot monsters in in detail like mechanically technically they're just they're engineered it's so interesting to look at them i think it's lacking in icons i think in npcs in the cast it's lacking in icons you know and so like when I say it's not special enough, I, it just it doesn't have those things that spark your memory and the things that they added in this new game, I don't think do either. And, and so it's funny, right? It's like uh, the new trailer uh, for uh, I forget what it's called. The Burning DLC? Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Is it yeah, yeah burning yeah. burning DL- something. Yeah. The LA DLC. Right. They're borrowing the icons of Hollywood. Right. It's yep. like to get you excited. It's like, here's these things that, you know, from the real world, not like, oh, this character's back mm-hmm. is not the exciting thing. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. It's, it's like, what does this game have to stand on? What can they show for the Horizon 3 trailer that would make people excited? Sure. That makes a lot of sense, Kyle. Honestly, it does. I never thought about it this way because to me, like. Mm, I feel like I wasn't emotionally invested, but not because of enemies, because I, I in 2017, my favorite game was Prey. And the enemies are blobs. That's a you problem. You think that's just a you problem? <laughs> no, like lots a of people. No, no, no. I'm choking with you. A lot of people love Prey. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people love Prey. That's true. But like, I feel like... It can't just only be the enemies or like that's something special is lacking because I think the game is special. Like the the story of the first game was mind blowing to me. Yeah. It was so great. But still, I feel like, huh, okay. You know, and there's different games where it has less story or less like atmosphere looks whatever and i still feel like there's more to them than horizon it's it's such a like su- subjective and unique thing for everybody but like somehow we all agree on that on horizon that's what kind of makes me mad because i can't get behind this yeah it's it's so weird it feels like the game is deserving of super fans who know everything about the lore, but you don't see them. You don't see their community. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like there, there could be people who know every single tribe and, you know, no can differentiate the makeup they wear and the armor they wear yes. because they put in that work. That's the crazy thing is they do. They, they would hear that criticism and they're like, you have no idea how hard I work to make this enemy iconic. Um, you know, and like, it, it is weird. It's just, that's the, that's the like the soul of creation right is Mm -hmm. that like you can do the math you can focus test and you can do everything you're supposed to do but you don't know how it's going to hit the hearts of your audience until it's out and yeah yeah, it's i mean the game is a huge success it's probably still gonna creak in creep into my top 10 right like i still like that video game sure yeah me too i like i like it a lot but you're so right in that there's just a general I guess lack of passion for that game Hmm. on this planet. Maybe we'll never know. Maybe it's just like everybody's hiding and keeping it a secret that they actually love Horizon so much. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll never know. Okay, here's the thing. I feel like if the next game introduced a little baby talking dinosaur named Jogbar, (laughs) it would have an icon. Oh my god. People would hate it. They'd be like, why did they add Jogbar to this? But 
It'd, be, it'd basically it'd be that thing though. It'd be like it's there's something to grasp onto. There's something that makes this game definitely different. It's gonna be their Jaja Bings. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's cuter. It is cute. I didn't say that it's cute. It's like you know, it's like two and a half feet tall. Like, oh, have you seen um, Jurassic World Dominion? Yeah, baby blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's like right? a talking baby blue, and it mm -hmm. makes and like Aloy's dialogue makes more sense. She's explaining things to Jogbar instead of just talking to herself. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, you should work for Gorilla. You should. Help I think I get fired in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. That's Shut also. Shut up, Jogbar. Shut up. <laughs> You just email everybody every day about your jog bar ideas. <laughs> oh my god, I love this. Do it, please. <laughs> All right. uh, there was one game left we didn't talk about, right? Stray. Stray I mean, and Pokemon Violet. You gotta oh, help yeah, me yeah. pick which one hits fits in the top three and which oh, one gets cut. Stray, cut Pokemon, Kyle. Honestly. All right. I, I think you're right. I, th I think the responsible thing to do is to cut Pokemon. Yep, it's the responsible and the right thing to do because they don't deserve that praise. Even though the game actually, the core of the game, the ideas of it, everything is super good. Yeah. But the rest is just a slap in the face. So pick pick Stray. Why did you okay. like Stray so much? Uh, Stray is a nice uh, uh, journey. It's, you know, it's an odyssey. It's like, it's, it's like start small, escalate, escalate, move into different unexpected directions and then have a giant, uh, conclude rewarding conclusion. Um, Stray, I think has some really fun sci-fi to it mm -hmm. where, uh, I mean, it's tough. It's really tough, honestly, to make like, where does humanity begin and end in regards to AI? Like, it's hard to make that interesting, but I think it has some nice takes and, Obviously, like, uh, all right, so you're a cat in this game, right? Sure. But, like, a cat is never controlled better than this. I think what's really interesting is that the level design and game design plays to the strengths of you, the player, playing as a cat. Yeah. So there's, like, lots of verticality. There's, like, thin little strips of sign that are fun to trot across. You know, you never feel in threat of dropping off, and it's not what the game's designed to be. And so it's like, it's really nice the way that some of these environments are designed. I just like enjoyed being in them so much, but also having this unique traversal I haven't felt in any other video game uh, applied to it. Really cool. Yeah, it's just a great idea. The whole game is just amazing. I feel like, see, this is what I mean exactly. Like the story is just the poor cat got lost, have, has to fight back to the surface. That's it. That's all you need. That's all you need. And obviously there's a lot of lore, but you're right. That's the plot. That's sure. the story. That's like the, the main story of it. Yeah. And it's it's such a it's such a ride. It's such an emotional ride too. Like there it it doesn't even speak. Like it's just a cat that walks around. It got a little backpack that speaks for him. You do have a meow button too, which is nice. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I really love that meow button. My my co-host Michael, he said there should be a lick your butthole button. All right. Then it well, would there be should perfect. Not be. No. no. <laughs> Why would you? I would honestly, I would put Pokemon Violet in my top three <laughs> if it had that button. <laughs> <laughs> it's what cats do all the time. Not all the time. It's when appropriate they do that. Yeah, and it's funny, and it looks like they're doing ballet. <laughs> so. That would have been a hilarious thing to add. But, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a, um, a personal taste. It was like, I was like super happy. I would have been super happy. But, you know, didn't have that button. So those were the games you really liked. I can't really, I, I just can't somehow. I really loved Pokemon Arceus. I loved it so much. The whole way through? Yes. Wow. I played so many hours of this game. It's even though it, even this game didn't look great. No. It was it's it's plain there's yeah, there's landscape, but it's not dense and it's not like atmospheric. It's just there's a bush. 
and that's it. Like there's, but it's not as bad as uh, Scarlet and Violet. So I didn't really care for that then. I was like, this is still a good game. It works. It doesn't have glitches, whatever. You know, it just works. And it's so fun to be like in this semi-open world, just hunting Pokemon, just catching Pokemon, not doing all like the arenas and all that human stuff. That's the that's the Pokemon game I've always wanted. And it was great. It was a great, great, great trip. And that's why it's in like my top three, I would guess. Also, I haven't finished God of War yet. Oh, but you got to finish. You got to finish. I know. We're so close. Okay. Um, we're going to, my friend Mike and I, we're going to finish it on New Year's, New Year's Eve, probably. Uh, so, but we're so close. We've seen a lot and it's like, it's so mind blowing. It's just, that's my favorite game this year. Even though I don't know how it ends yet. Cool. That's crazy to me. Like, how can I say this right now? Not knowing what happens, but yeah, don't I'm, lock it in yet. Don't lock it in, but yeah, sl- give it the spot, give it the parking spot, but don't uh, chain it in yet. Yeah. And I would also pick Stray. I think, even though I had a fourth, if I had a fourth option, it would be Kirby. Where's Elden Ring on your? You don't, you really don't like Elden Ring, huh? I, I only play 40, 40 hours, and that's not that's much. enough. For, Forty hours is enough to make an assessment. Yeah, but the point is I lost interest after 40 hours. Yeah, no, that's fair. I really like the straightforward flow of a normal Bloodborne, Dark Souls, whatever game. Sure. The open world is just too... Or a Kirby game. (laughs) Or a Kirby game. The open world was just too much for me in Elden Ring. It was just too much, man. I couldn't handle it. I was overwhelmed. I felt overwhelmed because I wanted to see it all, but like I was just overwhelmed. And then at some point there's so many options to go and I was like, no, I can't do it anymore. It's just, it stresses me out. A weird advantage of being like, stre- like I was streaming a lot of my Elden Ring playthrough. Yeah, uh, I saw the, that. The back half was mostly by myself, but like a weird advantage of streaming that I, like I, sometimes I wish everybody could have this is like, you pick this stone up and you're just like, what does this do? And then five people answer you immediately. Sure. Yeah. You know, like I think sometimes streaming enhances how much I like a video game. And Mm. I don't think Elden Ring is excluded there. I think it would have been a really tough first 24 hours in the game if I didn't have like constant feedback. Yeah. Yep. 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 I get that. For difficult, a very difficult and 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 like um, extraordinary game like Elden Ring is sure audience perfect, but to me it's like ugh, I would never stream a Souls game. Would you guess why? Because of backseaters and people saying get good. Yeah, and because I'm a woman. Mm. Yeah, it is. I mean, it does make it different. Yeah, because I'm a woman and. The trolls will come and backseat all the time and like say, this is, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. You have to go this way. You have to go that way. Do this. You know, it's never. And they would laugh if I die. And you die a lot. Everybody dies a lot. Oh, I mean, people laugh when I die. Yeah, but they, they mean it. They mean I it also, in a, in I laugh when other way. people die. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Like, I think I would laugh when you die as well, just to be clear here. It's Everybody funny would. when it's funny when somebody dies in Elden Ring, but I get what you're saying is that there's a different tone. It can get nasty sometimes. Yeah, right. That's yeah. why I wouldn't stream that. So okay. I, I'm on my own <laughs> with that game. I get it. So I I would take Kirby as my fourth pick because I love it. It's it's just Kirby, you know. I love the character itself. It's a round Flufflepuff with an eating habit. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks in everything and it looks cute all the time even though it it sucks in a car and this game was just so weird because it mixes the Kirby world with reality in such a fun way 
And it honestly has one of the best gaming intros of all time. Like an anime show. Yeah, maybe maybe of 2022 all time is that's a that's a st- that's a tough list to crack into, but yeah, that's it that was a shocking intro. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. I would never have guessed that. Like oh. And a dramatic conclusion too. Yes, the yeah. final boss battle and all this stuff. It was so everything was so good on this game and I can't I can't ignore that. Like it has to be like in the top three or four at least so yeah but interesting mostly um we we picked like the big players which normally i feel like i wouldn't do as much because i love indie games so but i guess indie games are more like hidden gems and i know you're i mean you're streaming three times a week and there's a lot of games to stream out there. And you're the person that kind of likes weird games and likes just, just tries out fun games. So I would ask you, could you name a bunch of streaming games you discovered this year and said, wow, this is actually really good? Yeah. Uh, so one of them that probably is going to be in my top five or top ten, it's not, it's not super hidden. Tinykin. Uh, oh, yes. Have you seen Tinykin? I have seen it. It's It works like Pikmin, right? That's the thing. That's why I, I streamed it. It's like, okay, I'll play any game that's like Pikmin. Let's do this. It turns out to be much more like a 3D platformer first. And mm-hmm. then the Pikmin element is just kind of like, you know, it's like Banjo-Kazooie and it's like Kazooie can shoot eggs. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's secondary to the real fun of the game, the Pikmin element. But I think it works in terms of uh, marketing and in, in terms of giving the game a unique look. The, it's called Tinykin and the things are called Tinykin, you know? Yeah. But generally, it's just super fun to explore 3D environments. It's, it's like a N64 throwback design-wise, but the worlds are so big. And it is, it's all, you know, the... Sh- the shape of a house, but you're, you're a tiny little character. And I love that always, you know, you know, just being in a giant regular world. Yeah. Right. You're being very, you're actually being a toy, right. And you're in a, like in the house and there's, everything is just huge because you're a little toy. You're toy sized, but you're, you're a human. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. I thought it was a toy. No, you're just a little person. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, man, sometimes, you know what I mean? Like uh, there's like a a grind, like a like a Tony Hawk manual. You know what I mean? Like you can just kind of like do fun tricks and just like grind on rails and just scoot on the regular surface. I love games that just uh, care about how fun it is to traverse through them. And I think that's an underrated thing about Tinykin is just uh, when you see an object far away, you look forward to going to it. Yes. Yeah, sure. That's what also the Souls games do very well. Just to look at stuff and you know, I'm I'm going to be there. I'm going to go yeah. there. Yeah. Makes it more exciting. Yeah, sure. I get that. Yeah. And I guess, I, yeah, in, in like a Tony Hawk way, right? You also know that the way there is going to be a blast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so like Elden Ring, I mean, you can ride a horse and you can like dodge roll, right? But it's not that fun to move. Hmm. And in Tinykin, it's fun to move. It's fun to jump. It's fun to slide. It's fun to hop through holes, you know? And so I, I really like that about the game. It's a really good 3D platformer, is what I would call it first. Okay, cool. Maybe I should try it finally, because Manu also recommended it. And I feel like nobody really talked about it in, like, mainstream. It's it's like it's like the most mainstream... Uh, non-mainstream game it can be you know what i mean like i feel like i feel like tinykin's getting some game of the year mentions but never never anybody's number one Mm. yeah under the radar yes yes but also like it's on it it's just on like it's on the edge of the radar (laughs) okay i can live with that the edge of the radar uh and then the other one i wanted to talk about was an absolutely bad game that I just had a really good time playing. It was called Exploria. 
And what I love about this is that it's a small team. You know, it's mostly one person making this video game that can sometimes be disastrous, but sometimes they can just put so much of themselves into the game that even if the game is bad, like the sincerity shines through and like their ideas shine through. And so it's like basically somebody making their own adventure, a modern adventure game. Somebody's attempt at making their own uh, like Elder Scrolls, you know, <laughs> which is impossible to do. It's impossible for one person to do this, but they try to have these cutscenes, and they try to have the story and dialogue and and they try to have combat. And so there's just something so sincere about it. And what was wild is that like later, you know, I streamed this game, Exploria, and the developer wrote to me explaining that like, hey, yeah, I love to watch in the playthrough. Like, and here's the thing. I'm I'm laughing at this game. I'm laughing at its face oh, and yeah. not always a nice way. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, that was so dumb. I'm laughing at it now. Sure. So, so like I imagine if this is your sense, if you just like wrote a poem and somebody laughs at it, I can't imagine how that feels. But this person was just like, you know, thank you for listening to my poem. Thank you for playing my video game and having a good time with it. Um, and let me know that there was one quest that is incomplete. You can't actually do that quest. So like <laughs> I spent like an hour and a half trying to get into this cabin. I was like, I'm sure there's something in this cabin. I know it. I got a quest marker for it, but there's there's no way. Um, you know what I mean? It was just, you know, I forget, sorry, I exported, I forgot we had to open that cabin when I exported the video game. But So it's like, it's something like that small is such a memorable, uh, at the end of the year, it's like one of the things I think about is just like, man, how interesting that that cabin will never be broken into because the game's team is so small. That's so funny. How many members does, does the team have? What do you think? I think it, I think it was like tops five, but one person doing the majority of the work. Oh man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just funny. You see, you see so much fun in those weird games you pick up. Like there's so many games nobody would ever just play like that because just because, right? And it's funny that then at the end of your year you say this one, this this kind of stuck with me, even though it's not good at all. Yeah. But I I had fun playing this game, which is ridiculous. It's so good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like it's like when you're on a trip, when you're on a vacation, the things that really stick to you the most often are when things went wrong. Sure. Yeah. You know, like the, your, your, some of your favorite moments with your friends and family is like when something bad happened and you had to react to it. <laughs> and I, I think those can be reinforcing memories. And so, yeah, maybe that's why I kind of like seek those things out in video games so much. Hmm. What do you do when, when it's actually bad? Do you say it I'm happens. not, not going to play this anymore? It's, it's something that I've been trying to do in 2022 is move on <laughs> for faster. Yeah. Because it's cruel, actually, if you have committed to a game that you don't like. Ugh. Feels like work then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it, it's only it's it's only been a good thing. Is we, I haven't dropped a game and regretted dropping it this good. entire year. Nice. So yeah, it's something I would recommend to anybody is check in with yourself frequently. Drop the game when you're not having fun. That's a great advice, by the way. I do that myself a lot more, even for podcasts. Like, you know, we we we're, we're totally free on what we talk about yeah. on this podcast. And if I try a game and I feel like, no, no, this is not, this is not good. This is not, I, w I don't want to play this game. I don't even want to talk about how, how not cool it is. Then we just don't do it. Sure. And it's good. Yeah. Even though maybe people are waiting for it. Maybe it's like a double A or even triple A title and people are waiting for that podcast. But we feel like, no. <laughs> No, we're not going to do that. So this is, you always have to draw a line. You always have to say, I'm not going to do this because this is not worth it. So what's funny is when you said, uh, I do that for podcasts. Yeah. I thought you were talking about like, uh, if you're not having a good time in a podcast, you just kind of dip out. <laughs> <laughs> 
okay, bye. No. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's like, hey, Kyle, uh, we're, we're most of the way through this, but I'm not really feeling it at this point. I got to go. <laughs> All right. No, it's not what I meant. But, yeah, yeah, of uh, course. Yeah. No, yeah, because I think, you know, your audience reacts, and if you're just miserable for hours and hours, mm -hmm. like, it's not going to be a valuable report. Right. Uh, whether you put in the extra 40 hours or not. Right. That's a good closing closing argument for like 2022. It's been a wild year in terms of video games, actually. A lot got delayed, but uh, mm. the delays also mean there's going to be so much coming up next year or when this cast is out this year, 2023. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's stuffed. 2023, it's stuff when you look at it right now. And I wonder, what are the games you're looking forward to? And what is the most overhyped game you think it's going to be bad? Ooh. Okay. I, so <laughs> I have a couple of answers for overhyped that I think are yes. honestly soft takes. Give them to me. I want to hear them. So I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you like the real, the the juicy take. Oh, juicy! Uh, because I, I obviously I think Starfield is overhyped, but it's not an interesting take. The people who are <laughs> hyped for it don't want to hear it, and the other people who already know it's not going to be that good already know. You know what I mean? Sure. So it's yeah. like, why, why get in? Um, and I feel the same. I feel concern about Tears of the Kingdom, <gasps> but at this point, we haven't seen enough for anybody to really make a truly educated argument about how much is different, how much is exciting about that game. You know, mm. all we have is the pedigree. So yeah. I think fire emblem engage is overhyped. Dude, I have absolutely no talking points into fire emblem. I don't <laughs> even know what this game is really about. I'm disappointed because I think that, Fire Emblem is on the cusp of like really taking off, right? And what they're going, the angle they're going for this one, it's similar to their mobile game, is that you can summon the spirits of heroes from the franchise's history. Oh, okay. And I, th I totally think it's the wrong way to go in this case. I'm so bummed about how this game is being marketed. It seems so misdirected. Um, it doesn't, it's like, it's like a, a band going in like a completely wrong direction because one of their songs took it's like Weezer. I feel like Fire Emblem <laughs> Engage is like a Weezer trajectory. Oh god. <laughs> oh right. If you I mean, I believe you. I can't relate because I have no clue about Should Fire we talk Emblem? about Tears of the Kingdom then? Do you really think that game's gonna be a huge hit in twenty twenty three? Let me say this. I'm not concerned. I think it's going to sell. I think it's going to be awesome. But I, f I feel like to make a sequel is lazy. That's my take on it. It's like the same Hyrule. It just adds the sky. And of course, the story is going to be different. But, you know, the, the <clears throat> it's not going to be a benchmark like uh, uh, Breath of the Wild was because it changed the game. It changed the industry at some point. Yeah. And you can't top that, but you're still doing a game with the same look and the same world, like the, the same map even, kind of. I don't think that's... Yeah, you shouldn't hype that. That's not hype-worthy. And I feel like it's totally possible that the game is all the things it needs to be. They just haven't mm -hmm. shown it yet. And yeah. Maybe that's a good idea, you know what I mean? But like... I think there's no reason for us on our side to believe yet. We can hope for sure, but I, I like, I don't, I, they haven't built that trust with me over like the three years yeah. since that game's been announced mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it's truly going to be as special or I, I guess you can't be, you can't be as special as Breath of the Wild, but I don't think it's even right. going to live up to the standard that game set. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for it, definitely, because I, love diving into Zelda games and yeah. but I, I also fear that it's gonna be a bit disappointing yeah what else my lookout 
this is going to be the best game of the year. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man 2. Oh, boy. Look out. Accept it now. That's such a Kyle answer, but same problem. <laughs> same problem. It's just an, it's just a sequel. Well, you have both. It will probably it will probably also be New York City. <laughs> yeah, right. And we have both Spider-Mans now. Okay. This is the most boring answer, Kyle, and I absolutely expected it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I must be true to my nature. That is just it's yeah. going to be the best video game of the year. But with great apologies to everybody else who's developing a game right now, you're not going to win Goaty when Spider-Man 2 is on the board. I'm not sure. No, I mean, there's plenty. Like, it's funny. It's a, it's exactly like Tears of the Kingdom. They haven't proven yep. shit yet. They have not. Yep. They haven't shown anything that's like, hey, look, this game's super different. It's like they can just tell me, hey, this one's got Venom in it. We're doing another Spider-Man game, and I'm, I'm there. Okay. As I said, I expected this. Mm -hmm. So let me. Yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, um, games that's gonna disappoint. Forspoken, definitely. No. What do you mean, no? Who's going to disappoint? There's like, there's, it's, Forspoken's already an underdog. And you you're think? saying this underdog is going to disappoint? I played three hours of the game. F fair enough. <laughs> but, but here's the thing, it's not, it's not propped up like Final Fantasy 16 is. You know what I mean? It's not propped yeah. up that much. But you're saying even at the level it is propped up, it's still going to let people down. It's going to let people down. I know it. I played it. I... I love the idea. I love I love her. I love the cat. I think it's the fish out of the water stories are mostly fun, right? What's the German word for isekai? Isekai? <laughs> Sorry, it's a it's a genre of like anime and manga where a real person from the real world comes into a fantasy realm. Oh. Who? The joke is nobody, nobody's nobody got a word for that, but Japan. In movies, you'd call it fish out of the water story. Right? Yeah, but it's it's more like it, you got to come from a completely different realm. You know, it's like Wizard mm -hmm. of Oz. Yeah. It's not just like I'm from Ohio and I moved to the big city. No, 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 no. But, you know. That, that's fish out of water. Conti I'm so sorry for disrupting for a really bad joke. No, 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 no. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> What's your, what is your... What's the game you really think is going to surprise people? Ooh, that's a hard one, honestly. You wrote the rundown. You didn't have one locked and loaded? Um, mm, not really, no. I, I Do you feel have like one that you're like scared to say? That I'm scared to say? I don't know. Like For me personally, if Judas would come out next year, this would be epic. <laughs> That's a good pick. Judas is a really good pick. And of course, Star Wars. That's going to be huge. And people I almost will picked love Star it. Wars. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It's tough. It's tough to say that game will beat expectations because like, they're already pretty high. Yep. But I still think it might. It might. Yep, yep, yep. I feel like I have the same feeling I did have with the second Avatar movie. Like, it's going to break even more records than the first one, even though the story is dumb. There's not much love in it for me. I, I feel like there's it's just a huge tech demo to me, Avatar. And the second movie even more so because I don't care for any of those characters in there. Mm -hmm. And But the world just loves it. And people That's how are, you feel about Star Wars Jedi Survivor? Yeah. Somehow no, I do. No. I never really went on with Fallen Order. How do you feel about that droid? On the back? Yeah, BD, I think it's named BD1. Cute. There's something. I know. I know. I know there's something, but I feel <laughs> I, I I'm so tired. As I'm tired of Marvel, I'm tired of Star Wars. Mm. It's just I feel like yeah. stop. <laughs> so I, I think a disappointing part about that trailer is that it's uh that they showed like, hey, he's got a Kylo Ren lightsaber. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like what a like what a weird conclusion to your trailer. Why why lead up to the fact that like he also has the lightsaber that only one guy in this whole universe had? Like 
what a bummer right but it's kind of mm-hmm. like playing into like oh fans are gonna love this shit but it's like i don't know just speak to the strengths of your game it's like a fun to explore game that's the thing i'm not cynical at all about that game because the design underlying it all is so solid it's it's actually fun to play that video game mm-hmm. if you stripped it of its star wars it would still be fun um and it's what's interesting is that yeah i wonder if the ha- the marketing is hampered by having to live up to the star wars standards definitely as i think disney is a huge influence into that marketing they would never give that out of hand so it's gonna be that's why this this sword is in it because and they focus on it is because they want to please fans it's a classic fan pleaser right yeah but it's it's what's interesting is about like this video game they i mean everybody everybody at star wars needs to take a moment and uh think about andor right it's like i think that they were operating on this thing where like oh every star wars show needs a lightsaber it needs the force you know what i mean they were they were operating on this thing where it's like everybody loves darth vader put him in everything and like they need to like take a sec and look at why andor is such a success like you can love star wars without shoving every aspect of everything into it and looking at the audience and nodding and winking um obviously it's too late for jedi survivor it's gonna nod and wink but like i i think everybody needs to uh drink some andor juice in the studios yeah times are changing again they do it because it worked forever marvel is built on that like it worked and worked and worked and worked self uh referencing self-referencing right that's the word yeah yeah of course it is yeah and all this all this fan pleaser stuff is what the entire marvel empire is built on so is star wars as it came to disney and people are just like i said tired don't do it anymore should you talk about should you talk about how uh james gunn said future video games are going to be tied into the same cinematic universe as the oh, movies please don't do it i mean i, I can't imagine no, I, I don't think i don't think I don't they realize the undertaking that is i mean it works for star wars i guess but like i can't i can't imagine that nah. working out no i don't feel good about this at all it makes sense, right? If you're if you are in head of a head of a studio, it's like, oh, all of this feeds into everything else. Um, but like, I'm sure like game designers are sweating their hair out thinking about like, I'm sorry, I have to everything, every design choice I make has to abide by the cinematic universe you're creating. You don't know, like, I got to make so many changes on the fly on a whim just to make something work. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I can just I don't know. Superman has to look like this and he has to have been here on this year and he can't do that thing. And I don't know, man, that's wild. That's a wild thing to say out loud, (laughs) but I I think it works for Jedi survivors. So we'll see. And the one obvious pick I have to do for games that just going to (laughs) sink skull and bones. Oh yeah. That's not right. That's not right. Everybody, everybody knows it's going to sink sunken already. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad. Honestly, I'm not that sad. No, me neither. Sounds cruel. Yeah, Ubisoft kind of screwed them over. Yeah, that's a big that's a big thing to open the Ubisoft Pandora box. <laughs> but yeah, games are not as good anymore, I guess, as they have been. I don't know if it's related to pandemic scandals, rep- like repetition of their franchise. Oh, I- studio they set up in singapore was like especially bad mm. oh probably yeah what did they do before nothing so they set up they got some like grants this is a right? new one wait yeah. didn't they no i thought they were which one was doing black flag couldn't tell you i thought singapore was doing black flag too years and years ago well it will make sense because that's where they started the boats and assassin's creed but I don't know. I honestly don't know. Doesn't matter. We 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 just know Skull and Bones are, is not going to be successful. All right. So it does look to me like Singapore definitely helped with a bunch of games. I think oh. this was going to be their first. Oh, their oh. lead. You mean? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Okay. All right. 
Thanks for looking that up. Mm, do you still have time left? Be honest. Okay, I got a, I got a little bit of time. <laughs> what do you mean a little bit? Because I gotta, I, I gotta go, go ahead, go ahead. I because I what I planned to do was to play a little game with you because you love to invent fun little games. Uh, but I don't know if we have the time anymore. It's got to be quick. Let me tell you what's it about, and then you okay. can decide. If you sure. if we can't do it today, you have to come back at some point, and we do it then. Okay. It's called What's in the Box. And I name video game titles, mm -hmm. and you're going to tell me what genre they are, the games, and what it's basically about. Are they real titles or fake titles? No, they're real. Okay, yeah, I can I can do this game easy. Okay. How many you got? Five. Okay, yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. It's fun. Uh, first game is named Fluffy Cubed. This is a real title of a real video game. Yes, they're real. All right, genre is puzzle platformer. Mm hmm. And Fuzzy Cubed is a. Uh, I mean, you control a character who drops cubes to move up to new platforms. You're trying to get from the bottom of the grass up to the clouds to ascend. Interesting. Well, you're right. It's a puzzle game. Okay. But, but not a platformer. No, not a platformer. You simply, you are a cube, a cute one with eyes, and you push around wooden cubes to a specific point on like a, something like a chess field look like okay that's it so i'm i'm the fuzzy cube fluffy fluffy i'm the fluffy cube you're the fluffy cube yeah that's the main character fluffy cube okay all right um turner boy commits tax evasion this is an av adventure game where you're doing favors for people it's like zelda with no combat mm. Well, it is an action adventure. It has combat. No. Yes. And uh, let me let me read the explanation I found. Turnip Boy is not able to pay his taxes and rips his forms to shreds in defiance. He is contacted by Mayor Onion, who convicts him of tax evasion and sentences him to collect various items under threat of jail time. Where's the combat? Well. If you watch a trailer, you're going to see combat. I swear I've seen the trailers for this game, and I just totally thought it was like a running errands kind of game. No, there's combat yeah, in it. Clearly, I wasn't paying attention. Funny. So you knew it. You knew the name. I did. Yeah, it happens. Uh, next one, one I really love, Squishies. It's just called Squishies? Yes. Okay, uh, Squishies is a multi couch co-op multiplayer game where you got to knock each other off uh, various squishy furniture and drop your opponents into the lava. Sounds more exciting than the actual game. Squishies is a PlayStation VR puzzle game where you use like the move controllers. They turn into fish oh, and no. those fish blow up little creatures called squishies and you have to do kind of like a mm, obstacle course or yeah are the fish alive in your hands no oh okay okay they look weird too it's just it's just one of those what the hell went wrong games yeah that sounds sad yeah next one love it toilet chronicles this is like this game's on steam it's like, this is like a point and click adventure game where like some guy has to, like the whole game is like, this guy's got to fix his toilet and it just, it gets, it's like, there's a hole in the bucket. You know what I mean? Like the, one problem leads to the other and he gets a girlfriend in the end. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. Actually, it's a horror game. No. Yes, it's a horror game. Well, a fun one. It doesn't look very scary at, at first glance, but you are on, in a, on a party in 2008. You go to the public toilet and you get trapped on it and someone 
from the other cabin pushes in toilet paper and says, you have to stay in the cabin. And then you stay in a cabin, but you don't know what to do. You don't, you don't trust. So as you walk out, the exit door is gone and you're trapped and you have to find out why and how you get out. That's actually a great premise. I love it. Yeah. I read that and I was like, I have to play this game. It's I on got Steam. a wishlist Toilet Chronicles. <laughs> it's on Steam. So I got that part right at least. <laughs> yeah. Good guess though. So last one. That should be easy. But I just loved I just loved the, the name of the game. Lord Wrinklebottom Investigates. Oh, this is a mystery game. Obviously, if Investigates is in the title. Wrinkle bottom, like I okay. Here's how I imagine the art is that it's like hand drawn but bad. You know the kind of thing where like the eyes don't match up. <laughs> Lord Wrinkle Bottom definitely has a mustache, and the mysteries you're solving, it's all like you're just like there's some rich guy who has a problem, mm -hmm. and you have to unravel just how bad of a person your client is. Mm. Well, of course it's a mystery. Because mm. it has investigates in it. Yeah. But it's it's also, it's a adventure. I think it's a text, not a text adventure, but like a point and click. Yeah. And you are <gasps> a gentleman giraffe. In I the, Googled it. I Googled it to see. I couldn't have been more wrong. The 1920s and an old friend has died and you have to figure out what happened. You're a beautiful giraffe. Well, yeah. the eyes the eyes look a little bad, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely not ugly. No, you're not ugly. No, it looks kind yeah. of fun, to be honest. Cool. So I just love the, the title, and it says that the gentleman giraffe's name is Wrinkle Bottom. <laughs> He's got a top hat and a pipe at all times. Yeah, right? That's amazing. A very amazing. proper giraffe. Oh, it's on Switch, too. Okay. That's amazing. Fair All enough. right, but you did well. No, I misjudged a few games based by their title. No, nah, you only misjudged badly squishies. Mm. The rest was kind of, you know, nail it. <laughs> Good. Fun game. That was a fun game. Nice. I hope you enjoyed it. It was, yeah, I thought about it. It was, I thought, what can I do? What Kyle Bossman did What's in the do? box? What's in the box? Do you know why... No, you don't want to know why I named it that. Because of the movie Seven? <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, yeah. No, what's that's in, the reference. What's in the box? All right. It's another one of your favorite Kevin Spacey movies. Yeah. Oh, I will never get over the fact. I, I will never get over the fact that he is who he is, actually. Yeah. Heart-wrenching. Anyway, Kyle, thank you so much for coming back and uh, do this traditional podcast with me. I love to do a traditional podcast. Right? It's so wholesome. I feel old. <laughs> it, it's wholesome, Kyle. Don't laugh. It is I, wholesome. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's something nice about that. There's something nice about that, right? And we had great fun this episode. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And we're going to do this next year again, for sure. Of course. Yeah, it's tradition. It's tradition. And everybody out there who listened to us doing our traditional podcast, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stepped well into 2023. Keep listening to us. Keep supporting us if you don't do it already on Steady and Patreon, of course, slash Insert Moin. And this is going to be the end of the episode now. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, everybody out there. And Happy New Year. <laughs>